All right, everybody, we're about to start part four of the wall build here. As you can see, got a little bit going. Um, kind of left off the last video, worked out these wheel wells and getting the sides built in. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on a little more detail on how I built the wheel well, and then we're gonna focus on the roof and really get this thing patched together and then uh, kind of move on from there. Um, this is gonna be our first layer, and then we're gonna reline it with another layer inside, maybe even three if we feel like we need it. So uh, that's what we're gonna focus on today. I wanna show you some tricks, um, those little, little things you can do when you don't have all the tools in the world and you need to uh, make some cool shapes. So we're gonna get on with it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for this video. Really appreciate it. So anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so here I'm using the Craig jig to make some Craig jig holes. I get this thing attached, and here's me putting it in. This is how the Craig jigs work. You can attach things from the side like that. Very useful in these kind of situations where you can't get screws into your corners from the outside. And we're building up some of the angle pieces that fit in for the wheel well. And it's a lot of trial and error with this. you got to get the angles correct so everything fits and then I made a little shape that covers it all up I'm using those Craig jig screws a lot to uh, join all my pieces again and installing the roof that was a lot of fun but it's the first layer kind of going in for the box so you can see I, uh, I'm using some of that 3x adhesive the construction adhesive and then we prop it up I think I had to do some adjusting there to make it work right but uh, once it's all in there, it's got kind of a curve to the roof. And then we got it adjusted, screw it down, and we let it sit for about a day or two, and then I came back. All right, everybody, a little update. Went ahead and just kept working along on it today. We got a little bit of time-lapse video for you guys to watch, but essentially what we did was you got the roof put in, got those 45s, and I even started on a second layer over here. So uh, as the second and third layers go in, it'll start looking a lot more uh, clean. It'll be not having to like do much groundwork laying out of where things go. It's all gonna kind of just fit at this point. So I'm gonna build up the layers and then we can move on to the back. So I'll get more of that on video for you. It's kind of where we're at. All this stuff is just time, but you can see the uh, second layer looks a lot better than the first. It's just, I'm able to do a little more with it once I've got everything measured out. And then on the last layer, the third layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a grid and we're gonna measure out all the screws and make sure they're all lined up so that when I go and patch all the little holes, it'll all be symmetrical and it'll look really cool next to the stain, kinda of like my previous wall that I had in here. It's gonna stain the inside and outside of it, so it should be pretty cool looking. So in the roof cure I basically laminated it up to the half inch sheet that we had up there so it's got a bit of a bow in it we'll see what it does when I pull the post out or let it sit for a good 48 hours and go from there so it's taking shape I'm gonna go home work on the design for this we'll go over some of that stopping point is kind of waiting on this thing basically uh, second layers in the roof now got it kind of propped up and screwed down I'm gonna let it set up for a few hours go get some lunch got the double insides I'm gonna go double the floor now once I can get these out of my way and then uh, I think at that point probably want now yeah, I might do a third third uh, layer of the roof today I gotta decide. So either I do the third layer of roof or second layer of the floor or both. Probably get both done to get it all done today. 
and then uh, put some measurements. I'm going to show you guys how to design based on what your shell is. A really easy way to get your cubic feet even in a funky shape like this. So after I get these layers on, we'll go over the measurement process and kind of get an idea. Because uh, there's enough here now that I can kind of get an idea of really how big it is. So you can see a lot of different angles to measure, but I'll show you how to do it. Just gonna keep chugging along here. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how I cut a perfect line using a skill saw. So basically the first thing I do is start with a new sheet that has square edges, you know, the factory edges. And we're gonna measure out from one of the ends the uh, piece we want. In this case, I'm going 41 inches. So I place a mark here. Go down to the other side and do the same. 41. And then uh, it's real handy to have a straight edge. You know, it could be a piece of wood or something, but definitely this 90 is pretty nice. Set this up on the mark. As so. And then we'll draw a line. To the mark. That's where we're going to want to have our cut. What I've set up is I went ahead and I measured off my saw from the blade to the X outside of the, uh, the guard here. And got a measurement for that. I go around on this side. Put my measurement from the mark I just made out to the measurement of the saw. Do the same down here. And how that set up is it's gonna cut, it's gonna cut uh, my line on this side of the, of the line. I actually want it on this side, so I'm gonna have to just reverse this. So we'll make our saw cut measurement up from this way. Hopefully this makes some sense. Now we've got a straight edge back. I'm going to use this double sided tape and put a couple strips on it. I made that are adjacent to my cut line. And the better you line these up, the better the cut comes out. And press it down really good. Now since my straight edge has a T on it, I can't cut all the way, but I can get most of the way pretty straight and then I just pull my square off to uh, finish my cut. But at this point, as long as the marks line up correctly, you'll see that the, uh, the guard lines up onto the ruler and the cutting teeth are right on my cut line. So go ahead and cut this and show you how easy it goes. So, 
little trick. It takes a little bit of time, but lines come out much better. All right, guys, so we're getting on to the uh, very last piece of the roof I gotta put in, it's the third layer, uh, not including the half inch. But uh, that little trick I showed you guys actually comes in handy at this point because sometimes you build walls and things don't come out perfectly square. So our measurement here in the front for the width is 41 and a half inches on the dot. If I go back here, it's gonna be a little bit different. Just slightly. We're about 41 and a quarter. So we lost about a quarter inch, about an eighth inch on each side coming back. And uh, that's not a big deal. Um, but that trick that I showed you guys allows me to make up for that. So if I go back to my sheet over there, um, I can kind of explain it. Um, but the gist of it is I got to cut down an eighth inch on each side of my sheet as I go to the back. And these are straight lines coming through here. You know, I know these lines are straight, I just know they taper in a little bit. So if I measure out my 41 and a half here and 41 and a quarter down here, and then make the straight edge lines with that tool and then follow them with my saw, uh, I get a piece that fits in pretty good and it uh, shrinks that eighth inch on each side. So uh, let's go check that out. Okay, so to do this and make it actually work is uh, I'm going to split the difference. If I have a half, if I have a quarter inch less width in the rear, I'm going to split the difference and have an eighth inch on each side come in as I go to the back. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the front, point an arrow forward, and I'm going to take tape measure, and this is the end of the sheet that we just cut off. And so we know it's 48 and some change. Looks like 48 and a quarter inches. Uh, that's how it comes from the store. So we're going to find the center of 48 and a quarter, which is going to be 24 and an eighth. And you can check it by flipping this around. If you get 24 and an eighth, you know you're right. So yeah, we're right on the money. So now we have the center. Now that we have the center mark, we're going to go ahead and do a center mark on this end of the board. Same thing. And now uh, we got to think about the front and the rear size. So the front size remembered was, I believe it was 42. No, 41 and a half, I think. I'm gonna go double check it real quick in the car. It's always good to check that. just a hair over 41 and a half, so about 41 and 5 eighths. So I gotta find the center of the measurement of 41 and 5 eighths. So that means, let's see, half of 41 is gonna be 20.5, plus another half of a half is 20.75, and then the other eighth is 16. So the center would be 20 and 16th past three quarters. So that's going to be, uh, what's that, 11 sixteenths. So you line that center up to the center you have on the board. And you'll be able to mark the this end of the tape. And then we're going to go out to that 41 and a half mark. And mark it there. So those should be equal distances from the center now. And they are. So 
so now we establish the width of the front based from the center. Now the rear is going to change sides, so I'm going to go measure the rear end of the car again one more time. It's 41 and 1 8. So from the center, we're going to have 41 and 1 8. It's going to be 20 and let's see. I believe that's 9 16 So 20 and 9 16 this way. Go out to our 41 and 8. Check that it's the same distance. Now we have those lines established, and we know it's a little wider up front, and it's going to be a little narrow in the back. So we're going to, the and we're going to connect the two lines we made, or the two marks we made on each end. Draw a straight line. And essentially, what this did is the line comes in this way, an eighth inch on this end from that end, and it's going to reverse. But overall, that makes up a quarter inch width difference from front to rear. And that pretty much accounts for the non-square of the wall, because they're never going to be perfect. So now we have the lines established. And these are going to be the lines that dictate how wide the piece is, so that we cut out. And uh, like we did earlier, I measure off of that for my saw mark, and I can make real straight lines using that straight edge. So uh, hopefully that made enough sense. All I really did was, was trying to make a non-square piece fit because uh, my roof isn't 100% square, it tapers off about a quarter inch. So we, uh, we shrink it an eighth inch on each end down here and it uh, works out. So uh, if you don't understand that, you could always ask me again in the comments. I can try to re-explain it. I know it's a little bit tough for me to work and explain sometimes, but uh, it's just a little trick I use to make sure my pieces fit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and we'll get it put in the car. Alright, so this is the last layer of the roof I got to put in and it's going to be stained so I want it to look nice and before I didn't really care too much about the pattern of screws I put on, but uh, now I'm going to make a grid so that it looks a little more presentable. Uh, in the box, so we can actually, uh, you know, have something laid out really well. So I'm going to go ahead and find the center on this guy. Probably go use my tape measure. Do that. So center on this is going to be twenty one and a half. I'm going to go put a row of screws on the center. And I use pencil on this because it's going to be stained. I have to draw really lightly because I want to be able to sand that off. So I really need to put a mark on it. Just enough to see. I know you guys can see it on the camera, but I can barely see it. Um, and I'm also going to go find a center this way. So half of 41 is going to be 20 and a half. We'll make another grid line there. And then uh, around the borders, I like to go in about an inch to an inch and a half 
all the way around. So I'm going to go in an inch and a half over here. And on this side. And the front and back ways, I'm going to go in just one inch. And uh, the reason for that is I have some 45s in the wood. I don't want the screws to really go through the 45s on these edges. And then we'll mark out the lines. And after I get the outside of the center established, then I go ahead and fill. I start dividing my areas down into halves over and over until I feel like they're dense enough. So we'll go ahead and put that in a time lapse. And uh, then we're going to pre-drill all the holes and you'll really be able to see what I did once, uh, once we get to that part. Okay, so we're about to install the roof here, and it's going to look really funny to you guys. You're probably going to laugh, and that's okay. Um, but I don't have any help, and this is the only way. So uh, I'm going to get some glue on this, and I'll show you how I put it in. But uh, like I said, a little weird, but it's all the only way I can do it. So we'll put it on a time lapse here, and let's just see. Alright everybody, so we're at the end of another day, I'm going to call it good for now, but uh, we've got three layers up on the roof, a couple on the bottom, and a couple on the sides for now. Uh, we're going to be adding to that as I kind of work on the design, um, so stay tuned for the next video. i got some really helpful information on actually finding the volume of an enclosure, uh, the easy way, I would say, um, but you're going to get a pretty exact number. So I'll show you that, it's really cool, and it's free. So. Stick around for the next video. Um, make sure to like and subscribe and comment. I really, you know, appreciate hearing from you guys because it kind of motivates me to keep pushing along, and uh, we'll get it done. So anyway, that's kind of uh, a lot of woodwork stuff we did today, and we'll catch you in the next one. Time to wrap it up.